Hello, greetings again from 5 Star Recaps. Today I will show you an American movie produced in 2021, titled, The Unforgivable. Spoilers alert, watch out and take care. Our protagonist, Ruth Slayer, has been in prison for about 20 years, she was in prison for killing a cop 20 years ago, and she left her little sister, Katie, into the hands of fate before taking the fall for her offenses. The morning before she is released, she remembers her memory with Katie. While in prison, she sent several letters to Katie, but she didn't get any reply, and she wonders how Katie is doing. Before leaving the prison that morning, she writes another letter to Katie. On the other hand, Katie, who is fortunate to have been adopted into a family that loves her, drives on the road. As a result of her stressful childhood and loss of most of her childhood memories, she gets paranoid a lot. While driving, she gets lost in thought, and she hits an oncoming car. As Ruth leaves the prison, she meets her guard and parole officer, Vince. Vince welcomes her to the outside world and tells her what should be the Ten Commandments of every prisoner let out by the government on parole. He reinstates that the major rule is to get a job. He tells her most companies do not like employing ex-convicts, but he has a fish company that will employ her. She refuses his offer and tells him she has a job, but he gives her the card asking her to use it whenever she needs it. On the other hand, Keith, the son of the police officer Ruth killed, finds out she has been released and decides to revenge for his father's death. Vince drives her to the dormitory where she will be staying, and she goes to her room. With the mindset of getting revenge, Keith visits his brother, Steve, to ask for his help, but Steve, who is now married with kids, decides he won't do anything to destroy his new family, and he isn't interested in revenge. Meanwhile, Katie is rushed to the hospital, and her adoptive parents visit her in fear. They suspect that she might have realized that her sister has been released, and they beg her to please stay with them for a while, and she reluctantly agrees. Unknown to them all, Ruth is also trying to find a means to find her lost sister. As Ruth thinks of her sister, someone notifies her that she has a call, she goes to pick it up, and it's a call from Keith, who calls her a cop killer. The location of the crime, her child, is now occupied by a black family, and while packing inside, they find a pair of baby shoes on the wall, the mother, Liz, asks them to return the shoe as some people put shoes in the wall as a sign of good luck. Just as Ruth has planned, she goes for the job she got while in prison, but unfortunately, the hirer no longer wants her. The card given to her by Vince comes in handy, and she calls the fish company. She starts working there. After she finishes work on the first day, she goes to the library to browse the adoption history of her sister, after which she travels to her former home. She starts from afar off and looks at the house. She remembers the fateful day and how the police attempted to evict her and her sister from their home. A cop enters and gets shot. The house owner, John, sees her. She lies that she is just checking the house, and John innocently asks her to enter. She meets Liz, John's wife. She stays there for a long time before deciding to leave. John offers to drive her down. She finds out John is a lawyer, although he is a trust fund lawyer. John also notices she has lied to him and asks her who she is. She confesses and tells him she has been trying to reach her sister for a long time, and she wants to meet her to know if she is indeed okay. John decides to help her and gives her a card. On the other hand, Katie speaks to her adoptive sister, Emily, about the childhood memories she sees, especially a lady who seems like her mother figure. Emily advises that she finds the woman, but Katie refuses the offer. In search of better employment and something she has a passion for, Ruth sees a construction site and enters to find out if she can work there, but the worker tells her they are NGO and can't pay for extra staff. She offers to build a stand in a few minutes, and the man decides to employ her. She tells Vince this during her next meeting with him, and he asks her if her boss knows she is an ex-convict. He advises that she should tell him while insisting that her boss didn't ask. A fellow worker at the fish company, Blake, tries to get closer to her. While working at her construction company, the man brings snacks for her. At first, she doesn't know it's Blake, so she attacks him first before she realizes he is the one, and she welcomes him. She realizes that she hasn't heard back from John, so she calls him, and she figures he has discovered she is a cop killer. He gets angry at her, but she begs him. She tells him she has every right to be angry and that she should please help her. He asks her to visit his office. On the other hand, Liz discovers who Ruth is from the real estate agent, and she gets angry about why Ruth had to visit her house. Also, Steve attends a cop party with Keith and some other police officers. He finds out Keith is still obsessed with getting revenge. He calls Keith out angrily, and Keith accuses him of forgetting their hardship after their father's death. Steve visits his sick mother in a coma and feels very sorrowful. As John returns home, Liz gets angry at him. She tells him he could deal with Ruth at work, but Ruth should never revisit her home. After leaving his mother's sick bed, Steve visits Ruth, she doesn't know it's him, and when they talk about parenthood, 
She says her parents are dead, but life goes on. He gets angry about the phrase life goes on and feels Ruth doesn't care about what he is going through, so he takes Katie's picture and leaves, planning his revenge. He goes to Keith and plans their revenge. On the other hand, Vince gets to know that Ruth is interested in finding Katie. He calls Ruth and advises Ruth to let Katie live her life. Katie's adoptive parents were given a letter from John asking them to meet with Ruth at least once. Ruth decides to at least relate with others. She meets Blake, one of her colleagues at the fish company, at a restaurant and confesses to him she is a cop killer. While Katie's parents talk about whether or not they should attend the meeting, the wife, Rachel, suggests they should go while the husband refuses. Emily stays by the door and hears their conversation. Words spread like wildfire, and the adage the walls have ears isn't hearsay. One fateful day, as Ruth gets to the fish company, one of her fellow workers calls her a cop killer, and they all attack her for killing a cop. She feels discouraged about this, and Vince takes her on a trip to make her feel good. He informs her that Katie's parents have agreed to meet with her. Emily is disturbed by what she hears her parents say, so when her parents aren't around, she goes around the house and searches for the letters Ruth sent to Katie while she was in prison. On the meeting day, conflicting issues are established. Katie's father believes that the court and Ruth have given a no-contact order and shouldn't get Katie involved in her life as Katie has gone through so much in life. They tell her Katie doesn't have any memory of Ruth and that Ruth shouldn't mess up Katie by trying to contact her. While they speak, Ruth is more interested in knowing whether or not her letters were delivered to Katie. When they inform her that the letters didn't get to Katie, she gets angry. However, Rachel tells her the letters weren't destroyed. At home, Emily finds these letters. She reads them all. Ruth leaves the law firm angrily. She returns to her workshop, where she receives a call from Emily asking to meet her. She meets Emily as scheduled. And they both share sweet memories of Katie. Emily tells Ruth that Katie has been traumatized and she doesn't remember her at all. Leaving Ruth, Emily tells her Katie will be playing the piano at 4 p.m. that day, and she can go there to see her. After planning an act of sweet revenge, Steve goes home only to find Keith on his wife. His wife is cheating on him with his brother, and this information breaks him up. He angrily hits Keith and leaves the house. He goes to his father's house, takes his gun, and leaves. Upon hearing that there is an opportunity to see her sister, Ruth attempts to call John to find out whether or not it is on the side of the law if she goes to see Katie. She tries calling John repeatedly, but John doesn't pick up. She doesn't want to miss out on the opportunity to see Katie, so she goes to John's house to see him. She, unfortunately, meets Liz at home. And you can imagine the pain Liz used to send her off. Liz tells Ruth that she lost all her rights and privileges to call Katie her sister when she committed a crime, and she is only suffering for her wrongdoing, so she should stop rubbing other people into her mess. Ruth is broken. She begs Liz to please help her contact John so she can see her sister. She gets exhausted and screams that all she had ever done in her life was to protect Katie, and she hasn't done anything to deserve being separated from her sister. She screams that Katie was just five and she has to make a choice. At this point, Liz assumes she might have been wrong then she asks Ruth to explain. Ruth eventually tells the truth. On the fateful day of the incident, while she threatened the cop that she won't evacuate the house, she was on a call with the police officers when the dead cop attempted to enter the house. Her back was turned against Katie, so she didn't see what Katie was doing. All she heard was a gun sound. Katie had killed the police officer, Katie was just five, and she couldn't allow her to spend her childhood in such a way, so she took Katie for ice cream and surrendered herself to the police. Liz decides to take her to the concert. On their way, she sees the ice cream store she left Katie before she got arrested. They get to the concert, and she receives a call from Steve. Steve kidnaps Emily thinking Emily is Katie, and Steve asks her to meet him at a location. Liz drives her there. She gets there and begs Steve to please leave Emily. She tells Steve that his late father was a great man, and she didn't wish him death. Outside the location, Liz contacts the police. On the other hand, Katie plays in her concert while she plays the key on the piano. She remembers how she used to play piano keys in Ruth's hand and also remembers how Ruth was arrested. The police arrive at the location and arrest Steve. Vance comes to take custody of his parole, and Katie, who has also recognized Ruth, comes to hug her passionately. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to our channel to get notified when we post the next recap. See you next time.